Yes, this series is back from the dead. Actually, it never died. We all thought it was the jungle story. In fact, the only reason I stopped was because I couldn't come up with a proper title for the hair-related rules. But worry not, I've chosen my title after three years. But before that, let's thank today's sponsor, Princess. Princess is one of the largest online stores in Southeast Asia where you can customize and personalize special gifts like t-shirts, canvases, pillows, mugs, and many more. Start your morning with a fresh cup of coffee in your personalized daddy mug. Release all the feels into this fluffy, comfy daddy pillow. Brighten up your living room with this daddy of a daddy canvas to make your parents question where they went wrong. All with Princess. They have a large library of ready-made designs and templates that you can use or you can just upload your very own design. So all you have to do is choose your product, upload your photo or design, then add text if necessary, and place your order. Simple. And yes, they do offer international shipping. My stuff came in this humongous package. Very secure packaging. I got a fluffy and sexy pillow. Very sexy. I got a mug, which I'm gonna drink from for the rest of my life. Got two t-shirts. This one's a simple design I made in Photoshop. And then this Hidoku Shinaide one. This huge canvas, which is my favorite out of all. They also gave these two for free. Now what makes Princess different from other sites is the quality that you get with their price point. I was so surprised by the print quality, the material quality, even their service is top notch. Very swift. You can just tell how good the quality is just by looking at these. So satisfy your weep soul today through Princess. Links in the description. Back to the video. So let me refresh your memory a little. I studied in an all-girls Christian school from age 10 to 17. And yes, while this was a Christian school funded by the church, we still had Muslim students. Now how did that work? Whenever we had Christian-related events, the Muslim teachers and students will not participate. They'll go to a separate room and sit around, finish up their homework. It's like free time for them. While the other faiths will have no choice but to sit through the event. Now this wasn't an international or private school. Nope, it was semi-government, semi-church. So it was similar to any other Malaysian public school. Same syllabus, same uniform, same general rules. Just that the church would receive massive donations from filthy rich Christian parents. I don't know, parents just have this thing with all girls schools. And that money would in turn be used to upgrade the facilities in the school. The overall environment was slightly better than your usual Malaysian public school. More advanced. Now the general hair related school rules in Malaysia is that you can't dye your hair. You can't wear any sort of colourful hair accessories. For those with long hair, you have to tie it up. Boys can't have long hair and... I don't know. Any other Malaysians from non-missionary schools want to chime in here? So how did my school take things too far? Well, first things first, all girls with long hair must tie it up and wear a ribbon, either black or white in colour. And if you are caught without a ribbon, you'll be issued an offence slip which will lead you to detention. But you can still save yourself. There's still hope by purchasing one from the prefects. This was a legit business the disciplined community ran. The prefects would stock up on ribbons, clips, hair ties, so that if you are caught without a ribbon or with messy hair that needs to be pinned, you have a chance to escape keep that offence slip. Now what did they do with the money? Well, it'll go to the committee funds and be used for their end year party or stock up on more ribbons. It's a cult, I tell ya. Now my experience with this was hell. I had long hair for the first 3 months when I was 13 and I would just forget to put my ribbon on. We didn't have this rule in primary school so I wasn't used to it. And I would buy a ribbon every single time I got caught. And you wanna know how much it cost? Hmm? This flimsy strip was 50 cents! I'd have tons of ribbons as a result of this and still forget to put it on. There was no escape because it was very easy to spot a ribbonless head in the sea of students in this school. And the prefects in my school were the perfect kids. There were so many criteria a student would have to fulfill in order to become a prefect, so they were mostly the nerdy rule-abiding kids. Which is why if you had a prefect for a classmate, they'd reprimand you as soon as they noticed that you're breaking the rules. There was even a rule for how to tie your hair. So if the length of your hair after tying it in a ponytail is above your bra, yes, they would feel your back to determine where your bra ended to measure. Harassment! So if it's above, you're safe. You know, you can live life. Go. Enjoy your freedom. If it does, however, pass your bra, you'll either have to braid it or do the bamboo style. And for the bamboo style, there was this particular number of sections that you would have to follow. Ready? Ridiculous. Well, Josh, just chop those locks off if you don't want to deal with that shit. Here's the thing, they had a rule where you couldn't have short hair. You can cut it short to a certain extent, but if it's too short, then that's just calling for trouble. They only gave an exception for those who were dealing with an illness. I had a schoolmate who had leukemia and she would wear a hat. She did survive, by the way. And then for religious purposes. I actually had no idea about this rule until an Indian Hindu classmate of mine shaved her head for some religious vow. And as it was growing back, the temp teacher comes in and goes, Why your hair so short? You know our school don't allow, right? And then she had to explain 
discipline blah 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 religion and the teacher told her to get a pass approved by the discipline community stating that she's allowed to have short hair and that she should wear a hat until her hair grew to an acceptable length. There was speculation that this was the school's way of handling the growing number of masculine presenting lesbian students because they would specifically say that it can't be too short because you will look like a boy and that will confuse the other girls. Confuse how? I don't need her to have short hair to want her to step on me. Please step on me. How rude of them to not acknowledge the femme presenting lesbians. But do you have any idea how annoying this rule was? That's why as soon as I graduated, I went to the hair salon and I told them to chop it all off as short as possible. Even now, I don't care if it looks like crap. The fact that for 5 years, I wasn't allowed to have shorter hair is enough to get me to chop it all off. I was lucky enough to grow up during the MySpace era. Now we Malaysians also had our fair share of cringy MySpace kids. And with this era came the hair. Oh that hair. They didn't have a rule stating no emo hairstyles allowed. They just had the basic paint your fringe up, if your fringe was touching your eyebrows, your forehead needs to breathe, my principal would say. I don't think my school was aware about the inspiration behind this hairstyle because to them everything was the same. Which is why this rule was also known as the no Justin Bieber hairstyle rule. Yes, they did the emo community dirty. To any youngsters watching, Justin Bieber rose to fame when I was 13. He looked like this when he broke the internet and his swishy swashy hair was quite the talk of the town. Of course my school took notice of this phenomena, hence the rule. Now I don't want to offend any of his fans but he was a cringy figure during my time and as an emo kid myself, it boiled my blood when they referred to the emo hairstyle as the Justin Bieber hairstyle. His didn't even look emo, it looked more like skater surfer boy, right? Let me tell you why this got on my nerves even more. So I also had my period of an emo hairstyle which we're not gonna talk about but I'm very certain that I never crossed the line. My fringe was always above the eyebrows, okay? But one day after recess, I was walking back to class with Natalie when Miss Fairy, yes, that horrible discipline teacher who always picked on me, Natalie quickly turns to me and we both checking is my hair okay, my badge, my socks. Cause even Natalie was aware of Miss Fairy targeting me every single time. So we walk past her and I'm like please don't stop me, please don't stop me, please don't. Girl, no Justin Bieber hairstyles in our school nah. And in that moment, I lost all that anxiety because my brain was trying to process her words. Did she just call my hairstyle a Justin Bieber hairstyle? I was so insulted. I didn't even care that she had stopped me. I went back to class and asked all my classmates. Do I look like a Muppet? Oh my god. And I'm still offended to this day. And if you watched this video, then you'd know that short hair must not touch the collar. If it does, then it's a sign that you must tie your hair up. Even if you have thick hair like mine, where it doesn't grow long, but thick. So I remember having at least 18 clips and bobby pins just to keep my hair in place since it did touch the collar but it wasn't tieable and Miss Fairy was up my ass about it. I have memories of me just sitting in front of the mirror at 6am preparing myself for the battle I was about to face with trying to comb this mane. Isn't this just a discriminatory rule for people with thick hair? I never asked to have such luscious locks. RIDICULOUS! My theory is, and I've said this before, I'm still sticking with it, these rules are a personal agenda. How can you keep students from enjoying the joys of short Hair. Last year during the lockdown where all the hair salons were closed, it was so hard for me to even recall how I survived having long hair when I was young. Anything longer than this is too hard for me to manage now and I never want to go back to having long hair again. Ever. But you know what I will do again? Use Princess. Once again, thank you so much to Princess for sponsoring this video. My weep soul is in heaven. Oh, and disclaimer, these are for personal use. If you're gonna print out these types of existing anime art, do it for personal use. So I do recommend Princess if you want a t-shirt or a mug of a series that you can only dream of getting. Or use Princess to personalize gifts for your weep friends. That's if you have friends. You can also use Princess as a supplier if you're an artist looking to start your own store that sells badges and tote bags with your artwork. So all the links will be in the description down below. It's an affiliate link so I do earn a sum of money if you guys purchase through this link and I'll see you when I see you.